Preview. Preview. Now, first and foremost, he asked the question, what is gravity? Well, gravity is a force, and this is the force that helps the earth to return back objects to it. Now, in other words, what I'm saying is, whenever you throw an object up, we see that it always comes down. And that force that draws it back to the earth is called the force of gravity. Now, let's go further. We go into defining gravitational field. Since we know what force of gravity is. Now, gravitational field is the field, or let's say is the region or area around which the force of gravity acts. That is why it's called a field. A field is any region or space or area around which a particular force acts. Now, that is why we call it a gravitational field. Now, for example, we look at something. We have um, the Earth. Now, the force of gravity acts around the Earth. Now, the fact that it acts around the Earth, this free space around which the force of gravity acts is called the gravitational field because within that region, the force of gravity acts. Now, let's go further. Um, gravitational force was actually discovered by somebody we know that is called Isaac Newton. He's a, uh, an Englishman who was looking at, okay, why is it that um, planets orbit around the sun and they don't fall out of their orbit? Then he started looking into it and he discovered that there were two forces keeping these planets in the orbit. And these two forces are, one, we have a gravitational force, and two, it was the force of inertia. Now, let's first take inertia. Now, on that motion, we've discussed um, inertia, and we know that the force of inertia is simply talking about um, the, the possibility of an object moving in a straight line or diverting when it is experiencing a force. Now, it is being defined, the law of inertia is defined thus. The law of inertia is defined, um, it states that an object or a body will keep moving in a straight line or it will keep um, remaining in a continuous state of rest until it is acted upon by an external force. Now what does this mean? Let's say for example I am standing. Now I am remaining in a constant state of rest. But if somebody pushes me, now what does it mean? It means that somebody has um, has exerted a force upon me that has stopped my continuous state of rest. That force of push has detailed my state of rest. Now, that is law of inertia. Now, the, object, the planets keep moving in a straight line. The planets keep moving in a straight line. But why they don't go out of their orbit is because there is a force keeping them in. Now, the force keeping them in is the force of gravity. Now, for every body, for every object in, in the universe, either it is the sun, the moon, the earth, human beings, living things, non living things, you all have a force of gravity around you. Now, that force of gravity is what keeps you whole. The force of gravity is what keeps your body together, that does not make you fall apart. This same force of gravity is what keeps these um, planets from going away from their orbits, though they are moving in a straight line. They are moving in a straight line, but a force is drawing them in. Now, because the sun is a bigger object or a bigger body than the planet, it has a greater force of gravity on this object. And it is this greater force that's keeping these um, planets in their orbits, drawing them in while they are moving in a straight line. So therefore, they keep moving in a circular or a spherical path. 
Now that is why these planets do not fall into the sun and burn out. It's also the same reason why the planets don't fall out of the orbit and keep moving in a straight line. Now let's go further. The, um, Sir Isaac Newton proposed a law called it the law of universal gravitation. Now the law says that the mass, uh, the that the distance, the force of gravitation is directly proportional to the product of the masses between two objects and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Now, mathematically, it is written like this. The force of gravity is directly proportional to the mass of two objects. Okay, we have two, two objects, M1, M2. Now, these are the masses of the two objects. The force of gravity between these two objects of masses M1 and M2 is directly proportional to the product of these masses. When you are talking about products in mathematics, in physics, or in science, you are talking about multiplication. So that means it's directly proportional to the multiplication of M1 and M2. And inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Now let us call this the distance between them as R. The square of the distance between them is R squared. Now, let's first separate this. It's directly proportional to the product of the masses. It is inversely proportional to the square of the distances between them. Putting this together, this is what you get. Now, we have this law of uh, this uh, I call, um, sign of proportionality. How do we remove it? We remove it by turning this into an equal to sign. And once you turn this into an equal to sign, you must introduce a constant. That constant now is called the gravitational constant. Now, we have F is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. Where G is the gravitational constant. And the value of our g is given as 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11. But this gravitational constant has a unit. Now, what is the unit of this gravitational constant? How do we get it? Now, I know that it is not easy for us to cram um, units in our head, but how do we get these units? Now, it is this way. Now, to get the unit of this constant, we do it this way. We say that F is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. We know that F is a force, the force of gravity. Now, the unit of force is Newton. So let's have this here, M is equal to, we are looking for G, which is a constant. M1 and M2 are masses. The product um, results in m squared. Now we have kg kg, which is the unit of each mass. Then all over r, r is the distance. The um, unit of distance is meter. So we have meter squared. Now look at this. We we'll make g a subject of formula. If you are making g a subject of formula, this is what we have. M squared comes to this side and multiplies n. This becomes n m squared equal to g kg. Kg multiplied by kg gives square. Now we go for that. G make g subject of formula. That becomes n m squared all over kg squared. Mathematically, you can rewrite it this way. G is equal to nm squared per kg squared or like this these are you get the units of your gravitational constant so therefore we see that our gravitational constant is equal to 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 nm squared kg raised to the power minus 2 so that's the unit of our gravitational constant 
Now, let's treat a question under this. They tell us that uh, the distance between two objects, the distance between two objects, each of 50 centimeters. Now, they are telling us that the masses of these objects, each of them is 50 centimeters. Okay, hold on. Let me. So now, we have question one. The telling us that find the force of gravity between two objects of masses 50 centimeter each. And now, they're telling us that, okay, sorry, find the force of gravity between two objects of masses 50 kg each, comma, and, okay, with a distance, with a distance of 50 centimeter between them. Now, take G to be 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Now, how do we answer this solution? Now, we first start with the law of universal gravitation, which says that the force of gravity between two masses is directly proportional to the square of the mass, the, the product of the masses m1, m2, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Now, this equals to f equals to g m1 m2 over r squared. Now, when it comes to y and echo, you have to show your workings. You start from the initial, from the law. You interpret the law. Now here yeah, I can see that where F is equal to force of gravity, comma, G is equal to gravitational constant. M1 and M2 is equal to masses of the objects. And R is what? The distance between the masses. Now, they usually mark with steps. Step one, step two. So you have to show your steps, show your workings, and interpret your laws. Now, we go for that. We start imputing the values for these um, for these figures from the question. Now, for F, F is what we are looking for. G is the gravitational constant, and it has this value, which is six point six seven times ten raised to the power minus eleven. Then multiply by M1. M1 is 50 centimeter. Multiply by M2, which is also 50 centimeter. Then all over R. The value of R now we are giving as okay, sorry. Yeah, M1 is 50 kg. M2 is 50 kg. Then the value of R is 50 centimeter. But note that the SI unit of distance is not centimeter. The SI unit of distance is meter. So what you have to do is convert this centimeter into meters. And now we know that 100 centimeter equals to 1 meter. So therefore 50 centimeter will be equal to 
that is 1 all over 2 meter or 0 0.5 meter. Now, how did I get this? If 100 centimeter is equal to 1 meter, 50 centimeter will be equal to 1 all over 50. Um, sorry, 50 centimeter will be equal to, yes, 1 all over 50. And that gives 0. Point, that is 0 0.05 meters. Now this is the value of our distance in meters. So from here we continue. We say our F now, which is the force of gravity, is equal to 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 multiplied by 2500, which is 50 multiplied by 50, all over 0 0.05 meter. Now let us rewrite this. If you are writing this, this now will be F is equal to 6.67 multiplied by 25 all over 5. Then we have um, multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 11 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 2. Then this will now be multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 2. Now, how did I get this? We have 6.67. We have 6.67 here. We have 10 raised to the power minus 11. We have 10 raised to the power minus 11 here. We have 25 here. Okay, that was one. Go. All right, so we have this. This can be rewritten as this. 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 times 2 times 25 times 10 raised to the power 2 all over 25 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 now how did we get this? we have 6.67 here we have 6.67 here we have 10 raised to the power minus 11 here it is also here now we have 25 2500. 2500. The decimal mark is here, which is insignificant. Now, taking this backwards, 1, 2, makes it become 25 times 10 raised to the power 2. That is why we have this here. Now, for 0 0.0025, the decimal mark is here, taking it forward, 1, 2, 3, 4 makes it 25 times 10 is power minus 4 because this is going forward the decimal mark is being shifted forward now that's why we have this now let's go for that we can rewrite this to be 6.67 times 25 all over 25 times 10 raised to the power 2 sorry 10 raised to the power minus 11 times 10 raised to the power 2 then all over this multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 4 now when we divide 25 takes out 25 so we are left with f is equal to 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 times 10 raised to the power 2 in indices Multiplication turns to addition, which is plus 2. Now we have division here. In indices, division turns to minus. So we have minus. This one carries minus also. That's bracket to minus 4. So this becomes 6.67 times 10 raised to the power. Now, minus 11 plus 2 gives us minus 9. Minus multiplied by minus gives us plus. Now, minus 9 plus 4 gives us minus 5. 
So this is what you are left with. Now our force of gravity is 6.67 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 5 Newton. Don't forget your units. Without the units, it is just a figure. With the Newton uh, unit, it becomes a force. Now, we've calculated the force of gravity for the question. Now, we can also go further. Let's go further. Now, there's something called gravitational potential. Now, before we go into gravitational potential, we know that whenever we try to get up, a force brings it down. And the force is force of gravity. But what happens before this object comes down? It is being acted upon by something called acceleration due to gravity. And that is G, represented by G, which is equal to 9.8 times 10 raised to the power minus meter per second. Now, what happens exactly is this. For every second, for every second traveled upwards, the object's speed or the object travels by this for every second. Now, let's have train an object up. For every second that passes, it travels 9.8 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 meters for every second that passes till it reduces in speed and then it starts falling with this also now let's make an illustration this is a boy he has an object now he throws this object upwards now at one second it has traveled 9.8 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 in meter but the speed with which it throws it reduces every passing second by this speed it decelerates with this speed till it gets to zero once it gets to zero then what happens is it starts falling down again and as it's falling down the speed increases by this speed every second till it gets to its landing point now, we want to see the correlation between this acceleration due to gravity and this force of gravity. Now, we know that acceleration due to gravity, G, is a force. Now, which is equal to F itself, which is the force of gravity. Now, if G is equal to F, which is force of gravity, or let's say G is equal to F, which is a force, now, also, we have our own F, which is force of gravity, to be equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. Now, I want to see the correlation between these two. If this G is equal to Ma, which is mass times, as, uh, times acceleration, which is also the formula for force. Now, let us see how this acceleration due to gravity relates with gravitational force. Okay, now we also have uh, our force of gravity. Which is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. Now, if acceleration due to gravity is a force, which is the same thing as F A, and we have F to be also G M1 M2 over R squared. Now, let us relate this together. F is equal to F, right? Now, MA, which is this, is equal to this. We are trying to see how they relate. Now, let's say we have an object on Earth. 
This is Earth. This is the center of the Earth. There is an object on Earth. Now, the distance between, let's say, the mass of the Earth itself is Me. The mass of the object is Mo. Now, the radius of the Earth. This is the radius. Now, the distance between the center of the Earth to where the object is, which is the surface of the Earth, is R, which is also the radius of the Earth. We can call that RE. So, this in turn can now be GME MO over RE squared. That's just representing what we have here, the mass of the Earth, the mass of the object. Now, the force of gravity between them is the mass of the Earth multiplied by the mass of the object, then divided by the square of the distance between them, which is from the center of the Earth to the surface of the Earth, which the object lies, which is R, the radius of the Earth. Now, this is what we have. Now, we can go further by saying Now, we can go further by saying this mass now, the mass we have here is the mass of the object which is this because the force acting on it is acting on its mass and its acceleration as it travels so this is also MO Now, MO we get cancelled by MO here and what you are left with is this. You have this A to be equal to G M E over R E squared. And now let's make G subject of formula. G becomes A R E squared all over M E, which is the relationship between them. Now, there's something called uh, gravitational potential. What is gravitational potential? This is the work done in moving a unit object, a unit distance, from where um, force of gravity acts on it. Now, let's say this is an object on Earth. For a work to be done on this, for it to, the work done on it is moving it a unit distance, which is one meter, which is the standard unit of um, distance. To move it one meter away from the surface of the earth, then we say what is done. Now, how do we measure this? Gravitational potential, from what we have here, which is the work done, and what's the formula for work done? That is um, mass times distance. That is work done. Now, how do we calculate the work done here? To calculate the work done here, what we are simply doing is taking the distance and taking the mass and taking the mass all together to one part. Now, we are going to use this from here. We have gravitational potential, let's represent that by V, becomes that is. M times D. Yeah, M is M E. Yeah, D is R E. Now we go for that. Gravitational potential V is equal to. Now we are taking this M E out and we are taking R E out. Now to add this, how do we put it? That's going to be. I'm recording now. Okay. We have M A is equal to G M one M two over R two. Now we are taking it that the mass of the Earth is M E. The mass of the object on the surface of the Earth is M O. The distance between the object on the surface of the Earth to the um, center of the Earth 
is R, and that is R E. It's the same thing as the radius of the earth. So, in other words, we have for um, force of gravity, it's acting on the mass of the object, which is M O. Then we have A, which is acceleration, equal to G. Then M Y is going to be the mass of the earth. Mass of the objects all over R E square. Now we have for potential um, gravitational potential. We said it is the work done. Work done in moving an object. A unit distance. A unit distance is known as one meter in a gravitational field. Now, formula for work done is force times distance. Force is the same thing as MA. Then multiply by distance. In this case, our distance is the radius, which is RE. So now we are going to take this out of the equation. Now we already have MA here, we have RE squared here. When RE comes here, we are going to have mass of objects multiplied by acceleration, then multiplied by RE to give GME MO all over RE. Now we have separated the square the two RE's. One RE comes here to give our work done. The other RE remains. Now, let's coin this now to be our V, which is the work done. It becomes, okay, before we coin this, we can have M naught here to cancel the M naught here. Then we are left with Acceleration multiplied by a radius equals to G M E over R E. You can coin this now to be V, which is G M over R.